Please, make yourself comfortable. <sighs> Comfort is golden, but seldom occurs as life plays a cruel game with our soul. For opportunity and all that spurs holds a price to bear that we do bankroll. I humbly request your high assistance. Resolve my dilemma with all thy might. Make me one again and true to time's dance, for I quest to end this unruly plight. Having survived my fair share of attempts, having for only outcome a lighter purse, I find myself in newfangled garments, pleading for mercy. Please, lift this curse. I, however, must admit, faith is low. You seem young at hand to cure my sorrow. Um, sorry, I didn't understand anything you said. You seem very articulate and well-spoken. Elegant and poised. Why are you here? Ah. Uh, some time ago, I fell upon a scribe to learn to read what silent love hath writ. Its staunch beauty, so beauteous, outcried, Be faithful to thy word, true to thy wit. <sighs> Steadfast studying brought me sheer delight. Knowledge beyond words, theater of life, royal characters with souls dark as night. Plots so thick they hailed of astounding strife. I plunged deeper, deeper into the books, <sighs> forsaking all presages and warnings. Time seemed to suddenly regress my looks, my tongue tied, locked into poetic rings. Now I am trapped in this manner of speak, and eloquence today is not so chic. Well, most people's attention span has been reduced to a trickle. It's the age of image, not the word. Your circumlocutory dissertations, although quite savorly entertaining, are possibly not of this time. Precisely, and that is why I am here. Cure this ailment, I shall be in your debt, in order to rejoin the humble dear and live by day, for too long have I slept. Expediency is the art of the day. Poetic license is far too tedious, for a gentleman must curve his dismay and attempt to forsake all things pious. It seems rhyme or reason will not prevail in this new age of brown-bagged collusion, or well, the best thing to do is omit detail and speak in monometer's illusion. <laughs> Fair maiden, pray tell, how can you assist this poor beggar to his moment of bliss? Hmm. Your problem is as novel as it is ancient. Let me understand this correctly. Your Shakespearean speak is an uncontrollable urge? You feel that to digress from a sonnet form would be blasphemous? Gallantry and chivalry are inherent to your being? <laughs> At your worst, you are a knight in shining armor? At your best, a Lancelot of eloquence? Let me see. Give me a minute. Having listened to your dark suffering, all that really comes to mind is why halt when every word from your mouth is singing praise to life with absolutely no fault. Your speech has only enticed me to ask, would you save a fair maiden in distress? Can you harness yourself to that sweet task instead of trying to change for who's bless? The lady who requires your expertise stands right before you in her time of need, should your poetry be not only tease, then stand forth and respond to my carnal plead. Does thy tongue spur more than warm pentagram? Is thy heart as luscious as thy verb slam? charms can no longer affect my sight. 
a psychologist. Evil one to choose your well-being over your patient's fight. Through your voluptuous charms of beauty stands strong a plan of personal creation, which has nothing to do with my mercy, only self-improved gratification. And know that your vile plan has been exposed. I have no other option but to flee, to save what honor I still have composed in the shining of your devilish plea. Stand aside, thou darkest and meanest witch. I retire from the ugliest bitch. My face is not worth sunburning. Thou poisonous bunch back toad, thy sin's not accidental, but a trade. Thou art unfit for any place but hell. <laughs> There's no more faith in thee than in a stewed prune. <laughs> Your virginity breeds mites, much like a cheese. My face is not worth sunburning. I can't remember the last one. <laughs> Does thy tongue spur more than warm pentagram? Is thy heart as <laughs> Stomach chorus.